Oil is one of the most sought after resources on the globe. The world runs in the oil industry so much that efforts to eliminate it have seen little success. If a country is blessed enough to have oil in its territory, then there is little to stop the state from becoming incredibly wealthy. Africa's most populous country, Nigeria, found itself in this position when it discovered oil in Bayelsa State in 1956, after about five decades of exploration. More oil would later be found in the Niger Delta, and these findings would bring large amounts of wealth to the West African country. The country would become Sub-Saharan Africa's largest oil producer and the 11th largest producer globally. This oil wealth provided large amounts of economic growth and employment for Nigeria. In fact, the Nigerian government has earned over 400 billion US dollars since the 1970s. Despite this, living standards in Nigeria have declined. The country's oil wealth has only fueled instability, corruption, and patronage. Politicians are constantly caught stealing money from Nigeria because of the vast amount of wealth oil generates in the country. The corruption employed by Nigerian politicians has essentially been a leech. Oil was meant to be something to speed up the country's development, but this is yet to happen. To become more prosperous, Nigeria needs to look at the problems in its oil industry and address them. Nigeria's oil industry is set up in a way where the government has firm control over all activities. The Ministry of Petroleum oversees the government-owned oil corporations and leads any sort of policy making in regards to oil. The President of Nigeria serves as the Minister and has a majority of the authority over it. A junior position called the Minister of State for Petroleum is also appointed by the President, but the office has few powers of its own. The Ministry of Petroleum oversees the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, which is the head government company in control of almost all activities to do with oil. The corporation has over 9,000 employees and controls 12 other government-owned companies that include refineries and petrochemical plants. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, or the NNPC, is often criticized for being too powerful. The administration of the company is left to the discretion of the individuals running it, which prevents fair and efficient decisions from being made. Another government company known as the Department of Petroleum Resources, or DPR, is supposed to oversee and regulate the NNPC, but many complain about it being too weak. This is because the DPR is still under the control of the Ministry of Petroleum, which can intrude on the DPR's attempts to regulate the NNPC. This leaves little oversight and accountability for the NNPC and causes the corporation to have little desire to be efficient. In oil-rich countries, licenses are often sold and awarded to companies so they can explore and produce oil. This often is one area in the oil industry where corruption often arises. The president, who is the Minister of Petroleum, is given full authority over the process of awarding licenses to companies in Nigeria. This means there is no legal process or oversight over how these licenses are sold in Nigeria. During the period of military rule in Nigeria, most licenses were awarded by the discretion of the military leaders. But after Nigeria became a democracy, the president at the time, Obasanjo, tried to end these practices. He tried to make the process competitive and transparent by creating auctions for companies to compete for oil licenses. This didn't stop the corrupt practices though. Companies ended up being unevenly treated. Some were given advantages such as first refusal rights, which gave certain companies the privilege of being asked first for oil licenses. These were given to those that promised to invest in energy in Nigeria, but many of these companies often lacked the ability to invest in such things. This exposed some of the corruption taking place in the auctions. In fact, several oil companies have been prosecuted because they were paying bribes to the Nigerian government for contracts and licenses. Politicians would get payments channeled to them or favor companies that they had a personal financial investment in. Corruption also often manifests within the many inefficiencies of the Nigerian government. Costly delays and inefficient government are a very common roadblock that oil companies face when trying to work within the country. These delays often create a demand for paying bribes to speed up the delays. For example, visas for abroad workers and importing equipment are often subject to custom delays that could take too long and be too costly. Also, when oil companies need to spend money within the country, it must be approved by the NNPC, which can take about 24 months. This is a major problem because in other countries, the average wait time is 6 to 9 months. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation is often a gatekeeper within the oil industry because many desire to keep these inefficient practices to continue their self-interested corruption. Theft of crude oil from pipelines, oil stations, and exporters are also a common occurrence in Nigeria. This practice is called bunkering and is widely believed that government officials and oil companies are involved in it. Groups of armed young men are often employed by powerful figures to engage in bunkering activities so they can sell the stolen oil themselves. Bunkering can reduce the amount of money the state gains, prevent investors from coming to Nigeria due to fear of their companies becoming targets, and also destabilizes the oil-rich regions in Nigeria. 
The last major source of corruption in Nigeria's oil industry is in its imports and exports. The NNPC gives export contracts to international oil companies, but there's a huge lack of transparency in how these are awarded. This opens the door to corruption, and many media outlets have accused government officials of awarding export contracts and licenses based on bribes from companies. Nigeria's oil refineries which produce petroleum are also heavily mismanaged. In fact, they only produce about half of their potential. This means whatever the refineries can't produce, the Nigerian government will import. These importations cause the country to spend money to make sure the imported oil is at an affordable price for Nigerians. This leads to corruption because companies will need to be paid by the Nigerian government for selling their petrol in Nigeria at a lower cost. Often, these payments take too long, which leads oil companies to bribe government officials to hurry the process up. Overall, corruption is rife within Nigeria's oil industry. That doesn't mean it can't be fixed, though. The solutions are far from easy, unfortunately. The NNPC has to be more productive and needs to have more oversight over what it does. This is the role the Department of Petroleum Resources should play, but it doesn't because it is heavily limited by the Ministry of Petroleum, which oversees it. There also needs to be more transparency in how money is handled by the NNPC. Too long has the corporation kept people in the dark in how it spends and attains its funds. These reforms might not be impossible to achieve either. There is a bill within the Nigerian government called the Petroleum Industry Bill, which seeks to reform the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and all other companies involved. The bill would make the industry more transparent, accountable, regulated, and productive. It hasn't been passed yet, but if it were, the oil industry would be one step closer to being a source of wealth for everyone in the country, rather than one just for corrupt leaders. Passing this bill is highly uncertain though, because elites within Nigeria have too much to gain from the corruption within the country's oil industry to simply let it end. For Nigeria to truly take the next step into becoming the country it's meant to be, the corrupt politicians and the system that helps them stand in the way of beneficial reforms such as this needs to be removed. It's up to Nigerians to do this though, and once they do, the country will truly start to benefit the people as a whole rather than just politicians.